In the last three weeks, Blackmagic has released two new betas, Beta 6 and Beta 7 for Resolve 15. So in this video, I'm going to go over the main changes they made. And those two betas, uh, there's about seven different changes. And I'm also going to include one that goes back to Beta 4, but I think it's a pretty big change. So we'll start with the first change. First addition here is they've added a bunch of new 3D titles. So you can see them here listed here. There's, I didn't count them exactly, but there's probably 10 to 12 of them here. You can try them out. So you can do, just drag them over, just like the other 3D titles. You can see here, it's got some fog in the background. And then the 3D text comes in. And do another one here with 3D title neon outlines. So you can see that. So they've actually made some nice additions. So you can just kind of go through them on your own and see which each one does. But that is the first major change they made. Uh, I think that was in beta six. And the next big change they made in beta six was when you add one of these new 3D titles and also any of the previous Fusion titles. If you come into the Fusion page, instead of it being a macro, it's actually a group. So I did a previous video on my channel where I showed you how you can make the three titles into a group so that you could edit them. But now by default, you just double click on it and you can see all the nodes. Let me just rearrange this here. But you can see all the nodes of the group. So that way it's very easy now to edit the Fusion titles. You were able to do it before, but you kind of had to, again, change, kind of open the file up, the settings file, and edit some things and change it and resave it before you could load it up. But now by default, it's set as a group. So you come into each of the different nodes, and when you select one, just double click over over here, and you could make any changes you want here. You could add new load, uh, you could add new nodes, and modify the Fusion title, and then resave it. And then you can, again, create your own Fusion titles if you want. But that was the next, the second biggest change they made in Beta 6. Okay, this next change is a quick one. It's more like a 2B instead of a full change. But within any of the built-in Fusion titles, they have it a little more organized over here within the inspector. So you have these toggles. So you could just see, say this is the first text controls. So when you scroll down, you'll just get that. And you can double click it, it'll go back up. You need to click on the next one and that goes down. So you just don't have continuously scrolling because if you have a lot of options available to change, then this list would get pretty long. So this way they have it a little more organized so you don't lose your place while you're trying to change. But the third big change within beta six and seven is the ability to basically copy your nodes from one clip to another. So make sure your clips are enabled up here so you can see them. So here you see you have the cinematic 3D title here, but in the next clip, it's just the media in. So if I want to copy what's in this node, uh, what's in this clip, the fusion nodes into this one, you first start off by making sure this one's selected, and you middle click on it with your mouse button, with your scroll wheel, and then you come to the next one that you want to copy from. So that's the two. That's where you want to go to, and then you middle click on the one you want to copy from, and then it copies it over. Now it might it goes over copies over top, so anything you had there will be gone. So if you want something to stay, say if you wanted that media in to stay, you might want to copy that first by clicking on it and hitting Control C. And then that way when you copy over the rest of the nodes into it, then you can paste it back in and add it into your flow. But that is uh, the way to copy from the clips, uh, your, your composition nodes, uh, from one clip to another. Now this fourth big change that they've implemented in Beta 7 has been requested since pretty much the first beta. And what they've added is a saver node. So if you come over here to your tools and you go to IO, you have the normal media in and media out, but now you have a saver. 
So if you're doing, say, a motion graphic or something, and you don't want to go through the problem, through all the trouble of going through the media out and the edit page and then going to deliver and all that, you just want to output it directly from the Fusion page. Just basically choose a saver, or you can do the shift space and saver. You just drag that onto your flow here. And you want to disconnect it from the media out and connect it into the saver. And then you come over here to the inspector and you want to click on browse. And they're basically uh, with one limit because they're just basically just first implementing it now in this beta is that you can only save it as open EXR files, which basically saves it as a uh, sequence of files of image files that you can then re-import into uh, Resolve if you want or another program that can handle EXR files. But at least it's a, it's a beginning. I'm sure they're going to add support for other file formats. But right here, I'm just naming this uh, file as test.exr. I'm saving it into a test folder. So you click Save. And then to actually start the uh, render, you come up to Fusion and you choose Render All Savers. And that renders it out. And again, it does it as a sequence of files. So I'll just go through. Well, there's still, still some errors to it, but uh, I had got it to work fine several different times. So I'll just kind of show you what the output looks like here. So it does, again, as a series of EXR files. Now you could re-import that into Resolve if you want. So I'll go back here to edit. And I'll bring it into my media pool here. So I'll go back to that folder. Select them all. So hit Control A, select them all. And then drag that into the media here. And now you can see that that is imported here as a video file. Now I can bring that onto the timeline. And then I can do the export to deliver it or just use it again in another project if I want to, or if you want to. Now again, I'm sure they're going to add other file formats to make it much more uh, actually practical and usable. But for right now, that's how they have it set up. But at least they're starting to implement it. And uh, again, in the next few betas, I'm sure it'll get better. And by the time the final version of uh, Resolve 15 is out, I'm sure it'll be much more full featured. So that was the fourth major change uh, that happened in beta 7. Okay, the fifth major thing they changed in beta 7, Resolve 15, is they've added a regular duplicate node, duplicate tool instead of just the 3D one, which was available in the previous betas. Uh, that was available in Fusion 9, but when they first did the first betas of the Fusion within Resolve 15, uh, that was missing, but now they've added it. So you can drag that down here, and then feed, say, your text into it, and put that in one. And then over here, you see it's all the same settings that you had in Fusion 9. You get up to number of copies, so I could say changes to three copies, and if I offset the center, so let's say come here, and come up, come up, you can see that I have three copies and I can animate that. If I can come over here, click on the, so I can animate that, and I can come forward, say 60 frames, and bring the center back together in the middle. And actually, probably better to actually Set this to directly 0.5, so it's directly. So then, as I scroll through here, you see the letters, the words come apart, start apart, and then come back together. So basically, it looks like most of the functionality of the duplicate node in Fusion 9 is now implemented here. So that's a nice addition. So that was the uh, fifth change they've made. The sixth biggest change in Beta 7 is ability within Fairlight to edit the automation data for the audio automation. And if you don't know what the uh, Fairlight automation is, if you come up here, it's a little symbol here, you click on that, and that enables the automation controls, which allows you to automate, uh, say, the fader or the volume or equalizer, and kind of either manually or through kind of drawing, you can change the levels so that when you play through your VO, it'll automatically change those. And I'll give you an example here. So what we're gonna change, double click on dynamics over here. You have these various controls here. We're, uh, we're going to automate the compressor. 
which is basically uh, kind of when you're not speaking, then it will drop the level so that if you have some background noise or any unwanted uh, audio in the background, you can adjust it here and kind of change that, where that happens and how much. Not really not going to go into that. That's just what we're going to be changing is the compressor threshold here. And we're going to be automating that. Now you could do automation through these controls up here and you can change. So you want to basically uh, save an automation. You'd be on right and you want to choose one of these other settings here. So you want to click say latch on touch and you want to enable it on the compressor. So you choose that. And then as the video played through, you can manually come in here and change the threshold and record your actions. But you could also uh, kind of draw directly on here and kind of accomplish the same thing, which is I think the major change they made in um, the beta seven. So you wanna come over here and you wanna to come to compressor and threshold and then you wanna enable it. And then come over here, you can basically draw on the points with a pencil. So you just come through here and click And when you click, you'll make a point. So that'll set it to a certain level. And you can come over here and click again. And change it, come along. And now this is just kind of an, ex as an example. I'm not actually wanting the audio to be like this, but you can change the levels and I'll double click on the dynamics again and actually play through and just watch this control right here and you'll see it change as different levels here change that I wrote on. So I'll play it through here. And you can see it changing here. Now it's just a, again, that was just a quick example. Come back to the beginning here and show it. And you can see it changing. So that way, and then you can also tweak them and change them, change different points. And you can move them and change them and edit the different points as you want to change the automation. But that's the sixth major feature that they changed uh, with beta seven. Now the seventh change is within the color page. So if you right click here and click grab still, it will grab a still from where you are in your timeline here. And I can move this along further along. Right click and grab still, you can see it's different different still image, but if you hover your mouse over top of it, it will actually scroll through and you might not want that to happen. So you can basically come up here and click on the three dots here and just uncheck live preview and that way that won't happen and they'll just be stills and you can use them as you would want or you can come back up to that and recheck and make sure live preview is set and then you can kind of scrub through the different previews here, the different stills. Now, I'm not 100% sure that was added in beta six or seven. I'm uh, pretty sure it wasn't there before, but that is a, uh, pretty sure that's a new feature that was added. So that's the seventh change with beta six and seven. And now the eighth and final change that I'll be highlighting here actually happened back in, I think it was beta four, but I'm just gonna cover it here. And that's basically the, they've changed the film damage settings. Uh, so I'll add that to this clip. And I'll come into the inspector, click on it and go to the op open FX. Now kind of the main change they made, they've made tweaks all throughout it. But if you come down here, you'll see uh, you could add a scratch. And if you go through the footage, you can see that scratches are present and they move along throughout the you can see it right here. But now originally you could just have one scratch. Now they've added the ability to add five different scratches and change all the different uh, parameters for each one. So you could have them go through and be smaller scratches and bigger scratches. Again, I'm not sure how many people will use this. I think the vintage look is kind of popular in certain circumstances. So you can kind of go through here and see how this works, what they did kind of tweak it and again added the ability to add more than one scratch and modify it a little bit more than uh, in the original betas. So that was the eight different changes I've seen uh, mostly in beta six and seven. So hopefully you found this video useful and thank you for watching.